G'day guys, um, just thought I'd uh, give you guys a quick look at uh, my um, latest uh, project, well one of my latest projects, I've got a lot of latest projects, this is just one of them. Uh, basically what it is, it's a high frequency uh, transceiver, um, it's called a Pico Star, I think that's said right. Some people call it Pico Star and some people call it Pico Star, but uh, just call it a HF transceiver. It's a software defined uh, HF transceiver. Um, most of the transceiver is a conventional sort of uh, analog design, but then everything comes down to a, a, an IF level and from there on it's all digital signal uh, processing and um, basically a, a software defined radio from that moment onwards. Everything's done in software, so all the mode selection, you know, sideband, upper sideband, CW, it's all done in, um, in software rather than with filters and that in a traditional analog transceiver. There's a uh, DSP chip, basically uh, that uh, uh, does all the noise reduction and all the digital filtering. Um, there's an EEPROM that goes in here which actually uh, sends instructions to the DSP unit. There's a uh, the mixer circuit here. This, this particular mixer is called a Magic Roundabout Mixer. It's quite a comprehensive mixer. It's got uh, three um, transformers and lots and lots of uh, JFETs and other bits and pieces. Um, the main thing about this um, mixer is that it, it, it does a very, very good job on, um, on HF, so we end up with a very good receiver. And um, yeah, it's a, basically a high performance mixer. Um, there's a few ICs there involved in, um, in input output functions and controlling various uh, parts of the transceiver. There's a bank of uh, uh, filters, there's three filters per band. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight bands there. These uh, ICs along the, the sides here select which filter you're using depending on the band. There's a section here with no uh, filters and that section uh, will, will eventually have a, uh, just a coaxial link going across it. So basically no filters at all. And that, that band there will give a general coverage receive. As a general coverage receiver, even though there's no filters in it, when you're using it in general coverage mode, it still works quite well because it's a software defined um, receiver, it, uh, it, it certainly works um, a lot better than what you would think for something that doesn't use any filtering. Of course on uh, HF bands, all the HF bands are filtered by this uh, particular unit here. Okay, um, there's some bits on the back as well, there's an audio amplifier I see, uh, opto oscillator, various links, there's a few parts that still go on the back here as well and there's uh, a few uh, surface amount capacitors and resistors to go on here, but basically all the ICs are in and um, it hasn't got far to go before it's finished. There's a, an example of some of the very, very tiny little ICs that you need to solder in. Um, I don't know how many pins that's got, but from what I could see, it's probably got about 20 pins per side and it's tiny. It's a, a very, very small part. The pins are very, very close together. A little bit difficult to solder, but um, what I've uh, discovered is that uh, flux, flux pen and flux is your friend when you're trying to solder those things in. If you've got enough flux on it, it doesn't matter what you do, it'll solder up and there won't be any uh, shorts between the pins. The key word is lots and lots of flux and good quality flux too, I might add. Alright, that's that board. <coughs> There's another board from the same transceiver. This one's got the crystal filter, which came out of a CB radio. It's got a Butler oscillator section there, which is not complete. Uh, DDS or digital um, synthesizer uh, chip in there, which controls your frequency, etc. Um, a couple of relays there where you can switch in and out of preamp, etc. 
USB micro USB port uh, for this, this transceiver when it's complete can actually be controlled from a computer as well if you want to so there's a micro USB port for that there's an Atmega processor chip there again lots and lots of very fine pitch pins but uh, again flux is your best friend and if you use plenty of it it, it kind of uh, you can solder it down without any without too much dramas a um, couple of regular dip bar ICs there uh, what else have we got here? Uh, <laughs> take a look at the back of it. Got some more ICs on the back. Uh, a few wire links that go here and there. A few more surface mount. There's a real-time clock, uh, which I haven't actually installed on this particular board yet, but that gives you uh, the real-time UTC and local time on, on, the, on the screen. That's that board. Let's have a look at another board. Okay, this is a uh, 150 watt power amplifier. Um, mostly complete, still needs a few resistors, uh, one transformer to be wound, and um, then it's a complete 150 watt PA. Let's just really knock the camera out. So yeah, it needs a few more bits and it'll be a complete 150 watt power amplifier for the uh, Transceiver. There's a uh, circuit board for a 20 watt power amplifier, which I haven't built yet. I haven't even started. Basically, the transceiver outputs a low power. This board brings it up to 20 watts, and then this board here drives the 150 watt board and um, gives you 150 watts of total power across the whole HF spectrum. A couple of little boards. There's a little micro USB board for so you can have an external micro USB on the back a couple of other little boards there one of these is a um, for an optical encoder for the tuning uh, VFO now I don't need that particular board because I've actually got a commercial optical encoder so I won't be using that so also a little buzzer board there which again I don't really need um, but handy to have uh, LCD display. This is a, uh, I think it's a 4.75 inch uh, color TFT um, touchscreen uh, display with 480 uh, by 200 and something uh, resolution, full color. And this is the uh, board that actually drives the display board. Again, uh, Atmega chip on there. There's still a an Epson uh, driver chip, which I need to uh, still source, goes on there. A couple of other small bits in that, that'll be ready as well. So that goes between the display and the uh, rest of the radio. And um, what it does is it gives you a touch screen. You can select all the modes and things, the strength meter, there's um, the frequency display, uh, memory display, pretty much everything is displayed on this screen. And being a touch screen, you've got down both sides, you've got various functions that your filters and that that you can just start select by touching the screen. Also there will be a, a whole stack of um, rotary encoders across the sides and along the bottom. Um, I, I like the touch screen thing but I also like having physical mechanical controls that you can turn. I like the feel of those so um, a lot of the functions on this screen I will be replicating with um, uh, physical buttons as well. Okay there was one board that I actually forgot to show and uh, it's the low pass filter board. Um, that's the low pass filter board there as you can see there's lots of uh, relays that select the various uh, low pass filters for each band. Um, the board is uh, it's got all the relays on it and uh, most of the uh, silver mica capacitors, but it's still missing all the uh, all the inductors. The inductors are all wound on uh, ferrite cores, and uh, don't have the right ferrite cores at the moment. So that's something else that needs to be finished. But uh, that's another part of the uh, radio project. Uh, as you can see, there's a uh, connector there, multi-pin connector on the side that basically connects via ribbon cable to one of the other boards and the actual radio selects the required 
low pass filter according to uh, what band you're on. So that's the uh, low pass filter board. So that's basically what the transceiver, what the bits are. A little bit of uh, information about this particular transceiver. This particular um, transceiver was uh, designed by a guy over in England. And uh, mind you, that was quite a long time ago. It looked nothing like this. It was all on homemade boards and uh, multiple individual boards for each individual stage. No digital display and all that sort of stuff. It was quite a, uh, a lot more basic uh, back then. Um, through the years, people have uh, grabbed the design and added various bits and pieces to it and improvements and that. And the board slowly, you know, the whole the transceiver slowly grew in complexity to where it is today, which is uh, quite a complex little beast. Um, to build something like this, of this kind of scale on a homemade circuit board, uh, is not very good. I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't recommend it. Um, I've built many, many boards through the years, so homemade boards, and you know, I noticed that 10 years later the, the, the boards are all corroded and you know, it's just not worth it. And you wouldn't go to all this trouble of building something like this on a homemade board and then have, having the problems of all the tracks corroding off on you, you know, over the, the next uh, uh, dozen or so years. Uh, fortunately, there's a guy here in Melbourne who um, uh, designed a board, uh, or designed a set of boards for this particular transceiver. And uh, these boards were supplied by him, uh, just basically purchased them off him. Um, he doesn't uh, get them done very often, but occasionally, if there's a bit of demand there, he actually uh, orders uh, you know, a dozen or so boards from uh, China. And uh, luckily for, for people like me, um, you know, you can get a, you can get some decent, decent boards. At least you, you're off to a good start with a decent quality board. Uh, it's all gold plated. Um, you know, very, very good quality. Uh, a lot of the ICs that come in three or four different size packages, the board actually has three or four different size. Uh, like you can probably see here, you've got a, the outline. You've got the layout for a bigger package, and inside there, you've got the layout for a much smaller package. Uh, a lot of the ICs are like that. There's three or four different layouts for three or four different uh, case styles. So you just buy the, the you know the style that you can get your hands on, and you solder it on, and basically, you know the the, the, the solder pads are there. So it's a very very well designed board, and uh, I'm uh, really really happy with the quality of the board. Um, as for uh, building the thing, it uh, takes quite a bit of time. There's quite a lot of people out there who've been building this for years and they still haven't finished. And um, I don't really like to build things very quickly. I don't like to take more than a couple of days to build something, but uh, this thing here, it uh, definitely uh, slows you down because um, a lot of the ICs, you can't just waltz into your local electronics store and buy these ICs. You have to order pretty much everything in from all different places all over the world. So, and you know, you're waiting five weeks, six weeks for bits to come from here and there. So it's a very, very slow project. And then, you know, there's also, there's lots and lots of parts. I mean, there's, uh, I think there's over 200, for example, just with the surface mount chip capacitors, there's over 200 uh, one nano, or no, 200, one, uh, 200 100 nano uh, chip capacitors. Just that one value, there's over 200 of them on, on these, uh, on this, transceiver project, so give you an idea how many parts is. It's like about a 90 page Excel spreadsheet for the parts list. There's no kit available for this. Um, the only thing you can get uh, occasionally is these boards. Everything else, you have to source everything yourself and put it all on yourself. Various Atmega chips and stuff you have to program yourself. There's a couple, there's a PIC chip. There's a old uh, UV erasable EEPROM. So it's not just you've got to source these parts, you've got to put them on there, then you've got to actually program and go to all the trouble of uh, learning how to use various programmers to program all the different chips. So it's quite, a, quite an involved little project, but um, when it's all finished, it's a very, very nice project and certainly one that I will definitely be proud of it when, it, when it's finished and, um, and I'm using it. Not that I'm, you know, really don't, uh, I'm not really that keen to actually use it as, uh, as such, but uh, I'll certainly be uh, happy to have it all running and in the case and, um, and working.
And yeah, anyway, so that's it. Took the star, HF transceiver project. That's been keeping me off the streets for quite a while. This is the box that I intend to uh, uh, build it into. As you can see, it's just an all aluminium box. Um, I got this from uh, my electronic supplier. He had a sale on these for um, $35, um, which is very, very cheap for a case of this kind of construction. It's very, very solid. It's got the built-in handles. Um, the front panel is quite thick aluminium, so is the back and so are the side panels. You can see there the, the thickness of them. It's, uh, the only thing that's a little bit soft is the top and bottom cover. But uh, all the rest of it, the sides and all that's all extremely high quality. And um, basically this is where I'm going to build the, the whole project into. I'm not sure yet whether if I'm going to put the two boards side by side on a tray and build a separate compartment in there uh, about three quarters of the way up and uh, put these two boards side by side on there uh, and everything else, PA, um, power supply, everything else on the bottom section or whether I'm just going to you know, mount these two boards uh, kind of like on top of each other on one side and everything else on the other side. I haven't really decided yet, but um, we'll work that out. Anyway, that's my little, well, my little, my big radio project. Um, yeah, look forward to finishing that in the next three or four months if uh, too many other things don't get in the way. I've got so many projects going at the moment, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I hope you, uh, hope you have enjoyed looking at that and I'll catch up with you again in the next video. Thanks for uh, watching. Don't forget to subscribe.